Hey guys, hope we are keeping well. In today's episode, I'm going to be brewing a Helles lager, which will involve some decoction mashing. I've not brewed a Helles before, but my inspiration to brew one came from all the amazing things I heard about Dovetail Helles over in Chicago. Now, I'm not brewing a clone of Dovetail Helles today, but rather a recipe inspired by their awesome Bavarian-influenced Helles. Helles is a clean, malty, gold-colored German lager with a smooth, grainy, sweet, malty flavor and a soft, dry finish. Subtle, spicy, floral or herbal hops and restrained bitterness help keep the balance malty, but not sweet, which helps make this beer a refreshing, all-year-round drink. Sounds great, doesn't it, guys? Now guys, before I move on to the ingredients and brew day for this delicious Helles, I do have an important announcement to make. After X amount of years of making videos and much recent consideration and deliberation, my friends, this will be my last and final video. Yes, I've decided to call it a day as content creator and what some may call influencer, and that decision hasn't been an easy one to make. So look, there's a few reasons why. New YouTube tax charges, algorithms, analytics, my time, blah, blah, blah. Look, I'm not gonna bore you with the details. However, on a positive side of things for me, which really influenced this decision is my little daughter, Daisy. It became clear to me on the production of, I think the last two time consuming videos that whilst I'm hard at work on YouTube content, I'm actually missing out on valuable time with her. If you knew my backstory, you'd probably agree, it's just simply not worth the effort. As and from the date of publishing this video, my channel reached 6,000 subscribers. Now, contrary to popular belief, you don't actually earn much from monetization on 6,000 subscribers. However, any money I have earned, I've donated to Crumlin's Children's Hospital in Dublin. So guys, please don't unsubscribe based on my announcement of my departure, as I'm gonna to continue to donate to the Children's Hospital with any further earnings I make on these videos, and I have only you guys to thank for that. And back so to our Helles brew day. A quick look at ingredients and mash decoction schedule. Now I'll put the ingredients, simple ingredients, up on screen. It's a simple 23 liter batch, our fermentables, 5.2 kg of. That will give us an OG of 1.048. We have three editions of hops, bump. Twenty-three grams at fifty minutes, another twenty-three grams at thirty minutes, and twenty-eight grams at flame out. There will be a few water adjustments on this one, all outlined clearly in the recipe links below, guys. Now I'll be double pitching using W thirty-four seventy dry lager yeast. This famous German yeast strain is used worldwide within the brewing industry. Thanks to its technological properties, this strain has become the most popular strain for lager brewing and is used by industry brewers and brewing groups around the globe. It's actually very popular for Helles. Recommended fermentation temperatures are nine degrees Celsius to 15 degrees, but ideally 12 degrees. With this yeast, I'll be aiming for an FG of 1.010, which will give us an ABV of percent Now, decoction mash. Okay, full disclosure here. I've not performed one before, but I believe a decoction mash is a step mash that is performed by removing a portion of mash, boiling it, and then returning it back to the main mash. Traditionally, decoction mashing was used to get the most out of the malt. That was not produced to, what would you say, today's levels of modification. Is it necessary? It's 
not necessary in a strict sense, but it will produce a better beer if done properly, I'm told. It's also a good way to hit multi-step temps without throwing your grain or your grist ratio off. So disclaimer, the steps I'll be performing for this decoction mash are not my own. They are ones I've researched from books, online resources, so on. Will they work? We'll see at the end of the video. Okay guys, so here is my decoction mash schedule, if I can remember my numbers. If not, it's down below the uh, description. Okay, I'll mash in at 53 degrees Celsius, that's 127 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Then I'll set the next mash to 64 degrees Celsius, 147 degrees Fahrenheit over nine minutes, then rest for 15 minutes. For this single decoction, I will pull about 30% of the mash, boil it for 15 minutes. Slowly and gently, I'm gonna return the decoction portion to the main mash. And then I'll bring that to a temperature of 71 degrees Celsius, 160 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna raise the temperature to 77 degrees Celsius, that's 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and do a mash, a mash out, a mess out, mash out. I'll then sparge and boil for 60 minutes following the hops uh, schedule. So I think that's all my numbers. If I'm wrong, I've it down below in the, uh, the description. So guys, without further ado, let's brew. Okay, so adding my Wyman's Bohemian Pilsner malt. I am a big fan of this malt. I've used it on a couple of brews. And I just love it. It's my kind of go-to Pilsner malt. So a little bit nervous about the decoction mash. As I said, not performed one before, but I'll give it a go. Also, just to preface before I do the decoction, this is purely experimental. Um, that not to uh, take into account what I'm doing um, because I've kind of just read about it, not really looked at videos, so I'm kind of winging it. So you might just, I don't know, ignore <laughs> what I do decoction wise. Okay, we get this mixed up as best as possible anyway. I just love this part. The smell is just divine. Okay, happy with that. On with my top grain plate. Push it down. Okay. So guys, uh, apologies about my announcement and anyone I've lined up to do any videos, fortunately, they won't be going ahead. This is my last video, guys. All apologies. It is what it is. And set you to mash. 53 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Then I ramp that up to 64 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. So I will be continuing brewing. Unfortunately, just not recording or editing. I love brewing, love brewing. Right, so, so that's my 64 degrees reached for 15 minutes. Keep the lid down all the time, guys. I just have it up just to record. So here is my pot for my decoction mash. Professional brewers, look away now. <laughs> okay. 
So the 15 minutes at 64 degrees Celsius has elapsed. I'm going to up that now to 71 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. And this is where I'm going to do the, the cochin mash. So I'm going to pull the thickest part of the mash from the bottom. Um, as I said, about 30% add that to Z pot and um, then boil it. Okay, so I've stopped the pump and I'm gonna just take out the uh, top ash plate. These gloves, by the way, highly recommend them. Okay. So I'd say whatever happens at this point, guys, just take with it a pinch of salt. Completely experimental. I've not I've not done this before, so no balling me out of it in the comment section. <laughs> so the thickest part of the mash. Scooping up, as I said, gonna get about 30% and then a bit of liquid then. Obviously make sure it doesn't burn in the pot. Thank you, Shamik, for your brew pot, buddy. And now I just want to take a few scoops of the wort or the mash liquid. Just to add this and make sure my boil is okay. Just a few scoops. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's about 30%. He says, while well, scratching his head. And get on my gas and get you over. So I'm gonna continue my um, mash at 71 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes while this comes to boil and then I'm going to slowly add it back into the um, into the grain fodder. So I just want to keep an eye on it here to make sure that um, just basically stirring it around gently. I don't want it kind of sticking at all to Shamek's pot. It'll kill me. I've only actually got into craft lagers recently. Um, I'm an ale man, but um, I do like a, an old lager now and again. Okay. I see a lot of people who put that kind of filter over the uh, the inlet pipe. I don't bother with it really. So I'm boiling this for 15 minutes and then I'm going to slowly and gently return it back to the uh, grain fodder. Right, so you legends. Now, would you come? Sorry guys, I've gone all quiet, all picture, no sound. I'm thinking. Yeah, so as I said, just slowly, I'm returning this back to the mash in in portions using this this is a liter jug that I have and that's our all back in and my top grain plate 
stick you back stick you back on so as I mentioned I have the uh, the grain fodder coming back up to what did I say 71 degrees Celsius which I think is a uh, 160 degrees Fahrenheit for this part and then I'll perform a mash out. Unfortunately, there won't be any tasting session. This is just a brew day video. I've made a, uh, a couple of Pilsners and they turned out, they turned out really, really nice um, because of the temperature control up in the um, shed in a, um, a fridge. And I have the STC 1000 and a, um, a greenhouse one of those heater heater tubes so it's handy now unfortunately as well in today's video there's no speakeasy session unfortunately the analytics the dropout on um, those sections um, yeah wasn't good unfortunately so final two minutes of my five minute mash out 77 degrees Celsius That is my mash out complete. Lovely clarity on this um, Hellas. Right, so I'm sparging with 15.75 litres and I've treated this water litre at a time. Now I'm a little bit anal with regards to my sparge temperature. I want to bang on each time going into the um, grain fodder. So I just check it with my thermometer and either add a little bit of water or kind of give it a, a whiz around with the spoon. Yeah, I know some of you are like, what? <laughs> And of course, just making sure I don't under or over sparge. I have no fancy sparge shots on this video, guys. <laughs> just straightforward. Right, so I've removed my grain basket and I'm just going to take off the top layer of protein as I do and then get myself sorted for our one hour boil right so I got my hop spider in place all good to go for our one hour boil Here is my spent grain, which I will be handing over to Cahill, a neighbour of mine who has chickens, for chicken food. And my 60 minute additions. Go. Give you a, a whiz around. What I tend to do with the hop spider is make sure to kind of scrape it along the, uh, the edges and the base because it can kind of get stuck um, in that fine mesh. So I kind of just hoosh it around, and especially at the, the bottom and the sides. Just a tip. Getting there now, guys. I'm feeling a little bit emotional on this, my last and final video on YouTube. I've had a, a ride of a time here on YouTube. It's been fantastic. And of course, a massive thank you to you guys. A little outro I've put together for everyone involved. Okay, so these are my um, flame out hops. And we can then start transferring this across to my fermenter. Now I'm not going into the grain fodder conical fermenter because it doesn't fit in my fridge. 
I basically have a smaller stainless steel fermenter that I'm going to attach a blow-off tube to and it just barely fits into my fridge but it does the job it's fantastic for lagering Okay guys, so the plan here is to, to drop it to 74 degrees Celsius, transfer it into this, my fermenter, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cold crash it to 9 degrees Celsius, and it's at that point I add my yeast. I'll then ramp that up to 12 degrees Celsius for seven days. Okay. Just checking my hopnet filter is doing its job, looking good. Right, so get this fermenter up to the shed and then back for my last and final outro. Guys, on this, my final video, there's a few people I'd really like to offer a sincere thank you to. I wanna start off by thanking anyone who clicked those subscribe or like buttons on my videos over the last X amount of years. Thank you to anyone for reaching out in the comment section for letting me know that my videos either inspired them to take up all grain brewing or that they made a decision based on the videos to upgrade their equipment. A massive thank you to my good friends Alan, Shamak, Eric, Darig, John, Franz, Ronan and anyone else who either helped out or appeared on previous videos. A big thank you to Mark and all the guys at Grainfather. Thanks very much for your support. I want to thank both Ballyclacavan Brewery and Canvas Brewery who kindly opened their doors to the Beardy Man channel to brew some fabulous clones of their commercial beers. The guys and I had an excellent time making those videos and as an amateur home brewer I actually learned so much on those episodes too to Wicklow Wolf and to Fat Justins who gave up their time on the recent Speak Easy sessions. Thanks so much guys, really appreciate it. To anyone else who has helped to the success of the channel over the last couple of years. Cheers guys and thank you. Stay safe. Mm -hmm.